are now in our Omid Yomish year, Kiddushin Ein Zayin Amud Aleph, and Zayin Amud Aleph Oz, as you very correctly said, Oz, Oz, Oz. Thank you to all of us who stay and follow us on tour anytime and on YouTube. Thank you. Please take your seats. And we are going straight into the Mishnah. Today we're going to learn about what happens when a Kohen marries the wrong kind of person. I don't mean the wrong kind of person personality-wise, but what happens when the Kohen marries the Chalolo or a Grusha or a Zoyna? What happens to the children of that family? Yeah, a Kohen. A Kohen. It is Rachmanus. And the Kohen married a Chalolo or a Zoyna or whatever or a Grusha. So then the children are all affected by that. Let's see how that works. Says the Heili Geheli Mishnah. Bas Cholol Zochol, Sula Mine Kuna Oilom. Bas Cholol Zochol, let's say the Zochol, meaning a Kohen and his wife, they have a son. Yeah, whoever the son marries, I don't care what the son marries. The son is the Cholol, obviously, right? And therefore, the sons, I don't know if he married Israelis, Kohenis, he's allowed to marry Kohenis. A Cholol may marry Kohenis. W means Waf, is Waf or wife by some people. So if he married, well, whoever he married, the daughter can never marry a Koyan. What about, yeah? And if he has a son, and a son, 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 le'oilam, forever. In other words, through the son, yeah, the lineage going from Cholol, yeah, all the sons and grandsons and great-grandsons of Cholol male, as long as it's a male side of the family, are forever Osir, me, yes, meaning their their sons are obviously disqualified from uh, eating truma, working in Beit Hamikdash, Birkas Koyanim applies today, my friends. And the daughter, the D is for daughter, and the daughters are possible from marrying Koyanim, the daughter of the Cholol, 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 all the way down, all the generations are possible to marry the Koyanim, the Chololois. The daughter, a Cholol, means she can't marry Koyan and can't eat truma. Israel shenosu Cholol. Okay, Israel nasa chololo. A coin and chololo have a girl. She is a chololo. They all are. The first generation are all chololim. She married. She married Israel. That's good. That's good news. That's a good choice. Yeah, because then the daughter is kosher. That daughter, meaning of a chololo and Israel, she got out of the family. She got out of the loop by marrying Israel. Then her daughter is kosher and she is good. As we're going to see the reason in the Gemara. Yeah, a soil with a chalala, the daughter is kosher, meaning the chalala loose only goes through the male, not through the female. Now, before we continue, I want to ask you the following question. Another daughter who's a chalala married a koyan, dead a girl, what's aloha then? It's very easy. <laughs> the daughter of that said couple, she married a koyan. She's a chalala married a koyan. Then what about a daughter? Chalala, impossible, obviously. Clearly, chalala, that's not even a question because I don't care what happened before or after. The mere fact that Halala married a coin is out of the question that she's possible because of the actual marriage. The only ones that are left in the game are a daughter who married Israel who is okay, and the son, whoever he marries, is not okay because Halalus goes through the male side of the family. That's so so easy. Baruch Hashem. Now, Halal Shanosa Bas Israel, a Halal, right? A male Halal who married Bas Israel, Peter Psulu Kehuna, a Halal son. Of them is a cholol. She married who? Even a basis soil or Quran is actually doesn't make a difference. The bat ipsulakuna, she's possible kuna. The Mishnah is quite repetitive because we understood that already from the first line of the Mishnah. And as the Gemara will say, this is just stylistically, we repeat the same sentence in different ways. We'll see why. So up until now, we spoke about cholalim, and that will be the topic today. Now let's talk about gerim without going too much details because. The second part of the Mishnah is not the part we'll deal with today. We'll just read the Mishnah and explain the Posh of Pshat. Rabbi Yedoyme, Bas Ger. We all know that a Giyores, a Giyores cannot marry a Kohen, right? A Kohen may not marry a Giyores. And what about if she's below three? She was Megar when she was two years old. Cute little Chinese girl. Then what's Aloha? Mechloikis, Abshim Nelyech, and Rabbonon. Right, you all remember that. Rabbanon say from the age of uh, one, she was Megayar, she cannot marry a coin. Rabbi Shem Gamliel says from the age of three. But everyone agrees that a girl who was Megayar from the age of three and above cannot marry a coin, right? Good. Now, Rabbi Yerem, Bas Ger Zoho, Bas Cholo Zoho. Oh, what happens if the Ger Zoho, there's a male Ger 
who married a regular Jewish woman, Jewish from birth, then what do we say? Same thing, kebas cholol zochol. Just like the daughter of the cholol, of the cholol is disqualified, even though he married a very nice Jewish kosher girl. So to imagine he wouldn't be a cholol, imagine he would be a girl, and his wife is the daughter of a Rosh Hashiva with Yichu still Moshe Rabbeinu, then what? But he's a girl. Doesn't matter. The girl is still disqualified because of her father. That's what Tobiada says. It's all droshes we're going to see in the Gemara. There's no why. It's all droshes from the Torah. No. He says, Israel who married the Gioris, you follow the father, right? And really, the daughter is okay for Kehuna, right? In other words, if the man is a regular Jewish boy who married the girls, the daughter is okay. And the girl should also bas Yisrael b'tekshel l'kiyuna also. And if a girl married the bas Yisrael, the daughter is also kosher. In other words, if either according to Blezo and Yaakov, he's more mekel, and he says, and as far as I know, that's halacha, as long as either father or mother were born Jewish, yeah, then the child, the daughter is ksher l'kiyuna. Okay, when we say born Jewish, we won't discuss now if the grandparents are gay. Let's leave that alone for now. But let's say one of them is a girl, fresh girl off the press, or Samea Chesha Torah. And what about the other side? The other side is born Jewish. Then the daughter can marry a coin. Aval, excluding who? Clearly. Only if Mackenzie married ex Mackenzie married ex McKinley, now they're called Halberstam. But the, he's McKenzie and she's McKinley. They were both Megayer. Then what? Now the Hasidish, they call themselves Halberstam. Then what? Then the girl is really Psula Lekihuna. Yeah, look very Hasidic. But the girl is Psula Lekihuna because both father and mother are Gerim. Echad Ger, Bechad Avodim Shukhorim, whether Gerim or Avodim Shukhorim. Give me a synonym for Avodim Shukhorim, anybody? Harurim, Harurim. Let's say the one of them. Let, the kids are the same Allah applies to Ger and Eved Meshuchah. It's always the same. And Eved or Shifcha, that were Eved Shifcha, and then they were released, then they were, you know, liberated. They have the status of Gerim regarding Yichus. Afilo ad Sara Doiros, even up to 10 generations, yeah? In other words, as we said, 10 generations, or until you don't remember their Gerim anymore. Achete Imam Yisrael, the one who's going to save the day, yeah, if everybody in the family are Gerim, 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 Gerim. They would never be able to marry Kohanim until one of them will break the cycle and will marry a Bas Yisrael, a regular Jewish girl, then their daughter will be able to marry a Kohen according to Oblez Yaakov. Right? There are such communities, Gerim. Yeah, in, in, there are such places. With the whole community, everyone's Gerim. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi even more may call. Rabbi Yossi says, Af ger geros, Rabbi Yossi says, a girl and a Gyoris who married Mazel Tov, then the girl is okay for Kihuna. So we see three opinions, right? One opinion says that even one side, right? Then it's Psulo Kihuna. The other one says only if both mother and father, then the girl is Psulo Kihuna. And the last opinion of OBIC says no, even if both if both sets of parents are, both parents are Gerim, still the girl is okay for Kihuna. And as I said, right now, questions are not welcome because this will be discussed not today. The Gerim Today we're going to focus exclusively, solely on the Kihuna business. That Halalovich family, family Halalovich. The question is, what happens with them? That's going to be, yeah, what's their fate? That's going to be the discussion. Says the Heilig Gigmore. Yeah, my le'oilom. Why did the Mishnah that described to us, that told us that a daughter, coin and uh, Halalo, coin and something, uh, Psula, their son is a... Holol, right? There's a big ches. Holol, what did we say? His daughter will always be le'oilom forbidden. What do you mean le'oilom? My le'oilom. Correct the Gemara. Why is the Mishnah telling me forever as opposed to what? Once she reaches 18, she's better. Answers the Gemara. Oh, one could have said, maybe holo, let's do some kind of binyan av from Not every psul is forever. Look at mitzri and edoimi. Mitzvah Edomi, Ger, a Ger that came from Egypt or from Edom. We know that both, whether he is male or she's female, the psul goes down to where? They cannot marry a regular Jewish girl or boy until the third generation. Oh, third generation is good. If his grandmother is a Mitzvah Edomis, he or she are okay to marry whoever they want. 
if so, maybe just look over there, yeah, the psul expires after three generations, maybe here too, by Chololo, three generations, KML, Kamash Malan, no, Kamash Malan, that Chololus is forever, a diamond is forever, and the Chololo is forever, yeah, so don't put, the coin should not give the diamond ring to the Chololo, the coin who marries a Grusha, the coin who marries a Grusha, is not only destroying himself and over Issa Do'ai, so both of them are over Issa she says, they're also ruining the lives of their future children. Weiter. Yisrael Shenoso Chalolo. Rabbi Shloimo has a question. Shloimo is asking a question. Why would have I thought that Chalol uh, is a mitzvah v'edoimi, dafka, only three generations? And that, yeah. We see Mamzer is loilom, right? And Amoini is loilom. Amoini Moravi. I'll tell you what the answer is, I think. By Mitzah and Edoim, it says three generations before Shem the Torah, towards the end of Devoim. Mashenken by Mamzer and Amoyin Nemoyavi, it says Le'olom. In Cholol, it doesn't say either. That's Pshat. In, the Torah doesn't say, begin in Pashas Emo, try me, test me. It doesn't say, it says Lo'echel Zaroi, yeah? It was Mechal Zaroi, Be'amov. Mashma, the Zer is Mechulal. doesn't say forever. Zaroi, his children. I don't know if my great-great-children are related to them as uh, Zari, right? In other words, we don't know which group it belongs to. Kamash Malan, it belongs to the group similar to Mamzerim and not similar to Mitzvah. Next, please. Yisrael Nosa Chalolo. Okay, Mr. Yisrael. This guy, Yisrael, such a nice guy. Good guy. He Jewish guy. Nice Jewish boy. She found a nice Jewish boy. Baruch Hashem. The parents are so happy. And he married a Chalolo. Can you still marry Chalolo? Yes. He's allowed to marry Chalolo. What about the girl? The girl is kosher. The girl, she gets a kosher, kosher certificate, right? That's a Kiddush. Yeah. She has a father who's a regular guy and the mother is a Chalolo. And the girl is not a Chalolo. Okay, that's very nice. But the obvious question is, Minan Emili, how do you know? How do you know who told you that a daughter of a Chalolo is not a Chalolo herself? Last time I checked, the daughter of a Goisha woman is Goita, right? And the daughter of a Jewish woman is Jewish, and you don't follow the father. And here, when it comes to Chalolo, you follow the fathers, not the mothers. Minan Emili, what's your source? Omar B'Yechanon, Mishum Rabbi Shimon, or Rabbi Shmoel, the two versions. Neymar Khan, it says over here, now both talk about Kohanim. As we know, you tell me, guys, quick, what are the main two prohibitions over male Kohanim that apply to male Kohanim, and not to women and not to other men? What are the two main issues that a coin has in his life for Isurim? You do know that, so don't look at me like that. He cannot. Hmm? He cannot marry everyone. And another completely different topic. What? Tuma. When they go to a class trip to Kivrei Tzadikim, all the yeshiva, the poor coin stays outside. What's he doing there? Dwindling his thumbs. So the kids are, yeah, that's a thing. So male koyhanim have two isurim, not to be nitma, not to come in contact to the dead, as you call it in English, and also not to marry all kinds of women. Oh, so now let's compare the two. It says over here, it says about koyhan godol and almono, but it applies to all koyhanim and grusha. Do not desecrate your, your zera be'amov in your nation. Okay. It says also, Oh, twice it says Be'amav amongst his nation. What's the second pasuk? Do not be nitma, right? Don't become Tome, Tome Meis. Ah, let's compare the two. Question, Alachi question. A girl told me from South America, she heard because she's a Kohenes, she's daughter of Khan, she's not allowed to go to the cemetery. Is this complete nonsense or no? Yes, it's complete nonsense. And whoever told her that, I don't think it was even true. Yes. Complete nonsense. Women, Koyanas, are allowed to go to basic verse. Yes. They're allowed to go to basic verse as much as they want. They can go to the Kever Maharal, Davin all day long, go to Gorub Shem all day long and stay there. Yeah. In other words, women, Koyanas, are allowed to be Nitma. Yeah. It says there, there's a posse, there's a dosha. Ah, just like by Tuma, we say Tuma, the prohibition of Tuma only applies to male Koyanim and not to female Koyanos. So to Afghan, it's the Chorber on the cave voice. So too. The prohibition, anything to do, I'm being general on purpose, anything to do with halolus, with yichus, with not marrying this and not marrying that, only applies to who? To male and not to female. And therefore, 
the Chalala, the girl who is a Chalala, right, from her, a Chalala will not be produced, so to speak. She's a Chalala, her daughter is kosher. Break the Gemara, wait a second. Haha, <laughs> Elamata, if you're telling me that this Pesach is ex excluding women from the whole business of Chalalus, then something in this chart is very wrong. Peter shall Kohen Godol. Yeah, let's say he's a Kohen Godol and she's an Almona, or the same thing, or Kohen Hedit and Chalala. Tishteri, she should also be okay. <laughs> Did you hear what he's saying? Look, first generation we say is Chalala. That girl is a Chalala and her girl is not. Why? If you're excluding women from the story, from the whole game, from the whole business, then she should also be excluded. So the first generation daughter, Mamish the daughter, of a Koyan and a Grusha, a Koyan and a Forbidden Wife, should also be okay. And she should be able to marry a Koyan. This one, her sister, will be able to marry a Koyan. Why don't we say that, right? Oh, answer the Gemara, no. There's a counter Limud. We're going now to vacillate between two opposite Limudim. Mixiv Benoi. Does it say by the Koyan, Loi Chalel Benoi Be'amov? Zaroi Ksiv. Loi Chalel Zaroi Be'amov. Which means, yeah, as we know, we've seen that before, when the Torah wants to specifically include girls and women, yeah, in a certain halacha, it says zaroi. Bnoi sometimes includes a girl, sometimes it doesn't. That's a business by itself. But zaroi always means also the girls. Zaroi means your seed, your children in general. Oh, it says loi chalel zaroi. So because it says about the koi hen, loi chalel zaroi, he's desecrating all these son, daughter, daughter. They're all Zaroi. They're all children. Therefore, that girl, these daughters also are Zaroi. They may not marry Koyhanim. Okay. If so, if so, wait a second. <laughs> if you're telling me now that the girls are out of the story, except for first generation. So far, what did we gain so far? The granddaughters should be fine and good and nice because it doesn't go through the girls, right? But only the girls themselves, the first generation Zaroi, are possible. But what about this daughter? Why did we say that she's excluded? I thought she's third generation, right? And she's also not his own daughter. And she's not first generation. And she's a girl. So she fits the criteria to be kosher. So why did you say that she's disqualified? And she is. This girl is disqualified, right? We said before Shon Mishnah. Why? She's second generation already. And she's a girl. So she should be fine. So the girl of a Cholol and a whoever, that should be okay. Her grandfather is one who did the, who did the Shtus, not, not the father. And says the Gemara, no, it says, Siv loy chalel zaroi. Because it says the Koyan should not desecrate his Zera, makish zaroi loy. Oh, we compare the Zera, meaning the son, to the father. There's a comparison like a copy and paste. We say we copy and paste the father to the son, just like the father, his first generation children are also, so to the son, his first generation children are always also girl or boy. And the truth is, and the same would go forever and ever, <laughs> right? Every male will copy, paste, 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 and all the children will be possible. I frag the Gemara, bat bitoy titzal. If so, if you compare the father to the son, and therefore they're always also, so compare the girls to the father too, they're also zera, right? You should compare, right, the father's first generation are also, <laughs> everyone's first generation to the also, also the girls, and everyone is first generation. <laughs> Every person, his own son is first generation, the girls too. So why do you kosherize her? She should be possible. And says Gemara, no. In ken zera shava mayani That's what I told you before. <laughs> The Gzer Shava does exclude something. Remember, what was the Gzer Shava? The Gzer Shava said, just like Tuma, I'm going to summarize everything soon, just like Tuma only applied to male Kohanim, and a female Kohanes can go to Kivir Tzadikim all day long and work in Hebra Kadisha and go to Rashbi and Rabbi Yisrael Glili and spend the entire day in the Galil and go to Kivir Tzadikim. So too, a girl, Chalalus doesn't apply to a girl. Oh, what do you mean doesn't apply to a girl? Get a little bit more specific, please. We have our specific. We said zar oi, just like zar oi means zar oi, only his, the head of that bad family, the head of the tribe who 
the first one to make the said mistake, it says Zaroi. Zaroi is telling me what? Only the first generation are all Zaroi, boys or girls are all Zaroi. They are all Chololim. I, but excluded girls, Shkoyach, excluded girls from the girl of the girl. So the daughter of the daughter, she is not in the story of Chololus because we did exclude girls some, somewhat in that Maya Hanile. You need to show for something. What about their cousin, the one who's the daughter of the son? She's possible. Why? Because we duplicate, we copy and paste the son to the father. We have a Hekesh. Him and his Zera are both first generation Psul. His first generation is possible, and his first generation is possible, and his his son, first generation possible. Very good. So why is the granddaughter okay? Because of two reasons. She's not first generation, and she's female. Therefore, she's okay. She got out of the bad loop. She may marry a Kohen Gadol, or the great Kohen. I'm not saying the P word. Not to... Yeah. Yes, we're all good. We're all happy. And if we're not, you can ask me questions. Now is a good time for questions. Oh, we said in the second part of the Mishnah, right? This is a guy, the son of a coin and let's say married whoever he married, the girl herself he cannot marry a coin. Yeah, where he said at the beginning of the Mishnah, what did we say? Bas he said the daughter of a Cholo Zoho is Psula from Kuna, disqualified from marrying a coin forever. So why are you repeating yourself all by a different style? And says the Gemara, I did it on the Yisrael Shenosa Chololo. Since the Reisha, we said we the, the style was more more private, talking about two individuals, not about the family. Yisrael Shenosa Chololo. One Yisrael married one Chololo, and the kids are okay for Kehuna. So the Seifa kept the same symmetric style, and we stylistically want to compare, and we repeated, and we said, that the girl is Psula. It's just a stylistic thing. Now comes the Gemara with another piece of information, which we already know. Our Mishnah, that said that the Cholol, the Cholol's daughter from whoever is possible, even though he married a regular, you know, some Jewish Israeli girl, the girl is possible. Our Mishnah does not follow the opinion of the Tana of the story Ben Yehuda, which we've seen already a few times. The Tana of the story Ben Yehuda, Oimer, of the story Ben Yehuda says, Keshem Shebnei Yisrael Mikva Tahar Lechalolos, listen to the words, Kach Benos Yisrael Mikva Tahar Lechalolim. Oh, what's Mikva Tahar? You're Tome or you're Goy? <laughs> Want to convert? Mikvah does wonders, right? Before and after, boom. Yeah, people were really good. Israel could see the difference between a Tom and a Tor. Yeah, yeah, the before Europe, the pre war Europe, the Rosh Hashivas could tell some some people. And therefore, what? Just like there's a mikvah, what's a mikvah over here? That girl is a halala, oh, yeah, yeah, disqualified for life. She marries the soil. Oh, he purifies her daughter, their daughter, and now she can marry a coin, right? It's a mikveh. By marrying out of the loop into a regular Israel, she kosherizes, purifies her girls. Says who? Rabbi Dostoy ben the same goes by woman. A cholol who married a regular Bas Israel, she, now the girl is okay and may marry a koyen. That's what he holds. Right? Okay? Only if both are chololim, if he's a cholol and she's a cholol, he found the same kind of woman, yeah, like him, Birds of a feather flock together, the cholol and the cholol, then the girl is cholol, family chololovich. But if, according to the story in Yudah, if any son-in-law, daughter-in-law are Israelim, then it's all good. I'm not talking about that naughty girl, the cholol married the Koyan. Of course they're possible. <laughs> the same as the parents. The imams did an avera. They're out of the picture. Okay. Frek the Gemara, my time at Rabbi Dostoy Ben Yehuda. Why is Rabbi Dostoy Ben Yehuda saying what he's saying that really a cholol who married a regular Israeli spook, the girl is kosher. Why is that? By the way, the son is not kosher. Yeah? No, <clears throat> the son is still a son of a cholol. He cannot work in Besamikdash. The girl can marry a coin. 
Omer Kro, because the Posuk says, Loi Khalel Zar Oi Bea Mov. It says he should not, Yechalel, he should not desecrate his Zera, his children, Bea Mov. It doesn't say Bea Mamav, Bea Mav, which means Bea Am Echadu de Mechel, Bishne Amomim, Einoi Mechel. He says, he learns the Drosha like this. The Torah could have said Amamav, like you say in Hebrew, Amami. Amamav meaning two nations. It doesn't say, it says Be'amov. What does it mean? You only mechalel your children as long as they stay within one nation. Interesting. Nation of Koyhanim, from Lechaz Koyhanim Kodesh. Koyhanim are like a nation to their own. And therefore, if they have the same gene, yeah, G-E-N-E, if they have the same gene of what? Of Cholol and Chololo, then there are mechula on both sides. If he, the Koyan, married a non cholala married a regular girl, then there's no problem. We obviously, we, Tanakama, doesn't hold of this am of am of He doesn't hold it such a dick in the Torah. But the story of says yes. It says amav only one nation. As long as the problem, the genealogical lachic problem stays in the family, father cholala and mother cholala only then the kid is the cholala. But if one of them got out of the loop, boom, in any way, no problem. Then the kids are kosher. Now we're going to talk, as we, talk, as we said before a few days ago, when a girl marries a um, the wrong kind of person, yeah? let's say a woman is an almon. I'll give an example. Sometimes women become disqualified by marrying a koyan, yeah? for example. Let's say a woman is an almono, right? An almono may marry a coin. Okay, a regular coin, a coin may marry an almono. That's what they do many times. A coin is divorced. He's, you know, searching for his dating almono. Very nice. What about if the almono married the coin godel? Be married by the mikdash, and let's say an almono marries a coin godel. So then that's, she's a naughty girl, and both him and her are in the vera. But then what happened? The coin godel died. Aha. Punishment. Yeah, the Kohen Godel died. Now she's an almana twice. So now she'll say, okay, I want to marry a coin now. Now I'm going to marry a coin. What about that? Yeah, yes or no? What do you say? Almana? No, a regular coin. A regular coin. Oh, penalize is not exactly the word I would use. It's not a knas. It's real chilul. It's more than that. She became a metzias, more lambdas. She becomes mamish. No, nah, I wouldn't say she's not as doino. It says she's not as doino. He's a halolo. Meaning, not only the child of the Almona and Kohen Godel is disqualified, clearly, that we all know, but also she herself, if she married Kohen the wrong way, then she also becomes usher to marry Koyanim later. Well, one second, what about if that Almona who married the Kohen Godel, naughty girl, and she used to eat Truma all the time? Now, she wants to keep eating Truma. She goes back to daddy's home. Yes, children, no children. She wants to come back to daddy and eat the truma. She opens the truma fridge. Ah, stop right there. You became what? A chalolo. You became disqualified from eating truma. Meaning you became an ankoenis. You lost your kohenis rights by marrying the wrong kind of guy. And therefore, you may not marry koyanim anymore. And you may not eat, may not eat truma anymore. And that is not even a punishment. We're going to see the source now. It's a metzias that was created in her you know, spirituality that she is not disqualified from being a Kohenis for all intents and purposes. All intents and purposes. Yes, question? I'm talking about a woman who was born to Kohanim. So she ate from all her life. Then she married, let's say, a Kohen, and he died. Almona, fine. Then she married a Kohen Godel. Stop right there. Right. Then she cannot eat from anymore. After one beer, she's possible from eating from her. Right. And even, that, and even after it dies, still the history remains. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see. Now, how, if, when you read the Torah, it doesn't say what I said. What does it say? Which means the Kohen who married, let's say, Kohen Godel, who married an Almano, a Kohen or Grusha, How do you know that she too, she herself, became disqualified from being a Kohenist? I'll give you another example. More in the to today. Let's say you have, an, you have a Grusha, divorcee, who married the Kohen, okay? Let's say she was a Kohenis from birth, yeah? Okay? She's a KFB, Kohenis from birth. KFB, instead of FFB, she's a KFB. She's Kohenis from birth, always ate Truma. She got divorced at some point, and then she married the Kohen. As you say, she can't very good. 
now she divorced him or he died. Can she now eat truma? No. She cannot eat truma anymore. Once she's a Kohen, once she's a Grusha with the Kohen, she wedded the wrong way, Kohen wise, she can't eat truma. How do you know that? What's the source for that? Marta Kalvachoimer. Because again, the Torah only seems to indicate that there's a problem with the children, not a problem with the woman herself. So we have to learn it somehow. How do we learn it? Oh, that's what everyone says about Memzerim. Look, here's a small. Look, 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 look. Mazal Shalova Aveira, Mishalel. Poor children. Zisa Kinderlach. Their name is Koy and Kaplan. Why don't you give them Truma? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, because the Torah said so. If those children that didn't do anything wrong and they are disqualified from being Koyanim, the children of a Koyan and a Grusha, let's say, are not Koyanim from birth. Naughty girl. She is an adult. She knew what she was doing and she broke the law over Avera. She too should be Mishalel. Clearly, Kol she yeah, in a way, it's like penalizing. Actually, I like what you're saying a little bit more at this stage. Yeah, Kol Shekain, it's not a penalty in the Rabbanon. If the Torah is mocked on the children from such a wedlock, Kol Shekain, the woman herself who did the wrong thing, clearly she is more at fault and the Torah says she is a Chalolo. Break the Gemara. What about the guy himself? Hmm. What about a Koyan who, ma who married a Grusha and then he did Teshuva and then he divorced her or she died? What about him? Can he go back to work in Besa Mikdash? Can he eat Ruma? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He married a Grusha. While he's married to the Grusha, he's not allowed to serve in the Holy Temple, in the sanctuary. But he divorced her, or he, she died, or whatever. He's not yet, or even he was not not to be with her anymore. You okay? So then, right? What happened? One second. Sounds okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who adds more yochiach? Yeah. The coin himself, once he's out of that relationship, he can go back to do what? Do whatever he wants. He need truma, and he can work in Beis Hamikdash. Wow. Ah, so you see that your formula is wrong. Listen to this. The coin himself, the guy himself, will prove the Kalv wrong. Look, a person, a coin himself, the male, he did the Avera, he does not become disqualified for life. I saw the Mishnah and the Gemara today. Rashi directed me to B'choyres Daf Mehemut Beis. You know what it says over there? Or the P'sul Kehanim, Mumim and this. And the Mishnah says, listen to this. Not only if he divorced her, let's say Koyen is married to a Grusha, and he's now going on the bus to Beis Amikdash with everybody else. They all go together, the whole family, and people tell him, uh, aren't you married to a Grusha? Like, you won't be able to work in Beis Amikdash. You're not going to be able to pull that one through. So you know what he does? He makes a neder. Before he even divorces the wife, the Grusha, he makes a neder and he won't touch her. Neder berabim that cannot be annulled. He makes a serious nether in front of people, a rabbonim, that's a whole different story. He makes a serious nether. I'm not touching that woman anymore. I come back from Mesa Mikdash. First thing I do will divorce her. He's allowed to work in Mesa Mikdash, even while he's married to the Grusha. But if he's seriously separated from her halachically with a nether, he's allowed to do his work in Mesa Mikdash, right? Oh, so you see what? You see that your formula is not true. <laughs> you see, but the man, although he did the wrong thing, he's not disqualified. And coach can have their divorces. So maybe the girl also, the woman, if she did the Avera, also maybe she doesn't get disqualified after divorce. Maybe she can also start a new page. What's the difference? The children, you see the children don't reflect on the parents. Says the Gemara, no. You can't compare him to her. Why? You can't compare the men to the woman. Why? Because what about a regular girl, a regular Jewish girl who unfortunately... She had relations with a goy and or with a mamzer and or with a brother. The kids are a nice girl, yeah, a free girl. And she became what? A zoino. And now she can't marry a koyen. And if she's a koyen, she can't eat truma. There's no male version of zoino, you know that? There is in other areas of znus, in halacha. But there is no male version of zoino. A man who was caught, a koyen, who was caught with a goite. Ooh, a koyen and a goite. What about him? He does tshuva, oy, 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 divorces or says goodbye to her. That's it. No, no, no. No, he, no problem. He can marry whoever he wants and he can work in Beis Amikdash and eat truma. 
So we see that male are less affected by the relationship than women are. It's also true in psychology, by the way. The men are less affected by having relations, yeah, in the forbidden way, than women are. The woman became a zoina, yeah, she, she became whatever, it's all thing, yeah. And therefore, by the woman, don't compare them to So too, just like by Znus, the woman is a zoina and the man is not zoina, there's no such thing. So too, when a man, male Cohen married the Grusha and then the divorce, She's she may be affected and he may not be affected, and therefore, what back to the Kalvachoimer. If the children, the Zisa, innocent kids of the coin and the Grusha, what wrong did they do? And their Chalolim, Poshik and her who did wrong, surely she becomes a Chalolo. Continues the Gemara, the Im Chaloimer. And if you have any claim against this Kalvachoimer, if there's anything you want to prove me wrong, what is that? Anything we're going to see soon. If you have any claim against the Kalvachoimer, then I have another gun in my storage room. I have another piece of weapon. Yeah, here. Now my uh, artillery. artillery. Omar Kron, the Posak says, What does it mean, What does it mean, Lechalel? What does it mean lechalel? lechalel means to desecrate, right? To desecrate means, can I desecrate this uh, phone? No, it's kosher, but it's not Kodesh. You can only desecrate something that was good in Kodesh, right? And then you desecrate it, right? You can't desecrate the body of a dog. The dead body of a dog is no Kedush. Huh? You can't desecrate it. Oh, and therefore, when it says don't desecrate the Zerah, what does it mean? Lo yechula zesho yokosho v'nishchalel. Something that was kosher. She was a good girl. She was a good girl. She was Grusha. She was whatever, Chalolo. But Lamaisa. She desecrated herself in the middle of her life. That's called desecration. That's called halal, right? And therefore, she became halala. But Shank and the children, they never ever became desecrate, right? In other words, the shot of the post can be loy chalel zaroi. Zera sometimes means sperm. Sorry to be so graphic. It doesn't always mean children. Once the sperm is in her body, I'm sorry to get graphic, then she's mit chalel. She was good before and she became desecrated. The children, on the other hand, is that they're, they're also they also hollow, but they did not become desecrated. They were born that way. They, were, they never had shasta kosher. They were never any. They didn't know anything different. So therefore, the pasuk is after targeting at least Beremes, the girl herself who was good and became desecrated. Therefore, either mitzad kal v'chomer or mitzad the remez of chilul yichalel, both these sources are good enough to tell me that a woman who married a koyen was not supposed to. She becomes Chololo. Questions can be in a minute, not now. What was that if? What was that if you claim anything, then I'll give you this answer. What was that potential claim against the Kalvachoimer? What was the Kalvachoimer? If the kids are possible and didn't do anything wrong, Boshek and she who did wrong should be possible. How can you break such a nice Kalvachoimer? One could claim, one could actually use the opposite logic to the Kalvachoimer. Mamish the opposite logic. Malizaroi shekin itziroso ba vera the zera. It's not about fault. Nobody's sitting here on the psychologist's couch. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's a reality. Zera was itziroso ba vera right from the conception from the itzira. It's a vera koyen a koyen sperm with a grusha zoyin cholalo. They were born ba vera. Omer krolo ichalel and by them we say okay they are cholalim. They are apostle right from the start. Yeah. Lo yechulal, yeah, he should not become cholol. Zesho lo yechulal zesho. Excuse me, lo yechal. Sorry, lo yechulal zesho. Kosher when he's But could be somebody that started their life the right way. She was a good girl up until the age of I don't know, twenty-two and a half. Then she went to the coin and married him. Maybe, maybe she doesn't become a cholol, right? She doesn't start with the left foot. Yeah, maybe in the middle of life to change her status. Maybe that we don't say. Kachava mina against the kol b'chomer. Yeah, it's not about fault, it's about status. Their status was bad to begin with, their chololim, and before she in the Torah. But a girl who was good up until she married the Koyen, maybe then, but her it's different. Kamash Malan, that no. Because it says in the Posuk Yichula, that's the Chiddush, very nice. It says the Posuk, do not desecrate. Desecrating Dafka means the one that was kosher and went down. Yeah, You can't make something bad if it was bad, right? That's that's chat. So the maskono, the kids are any rusha, zoino, halolo, pa pa pa, almonoko and godon. Once they marry the coin, even not marriage, even bia, even bia, 
She had relations with the Kohen. She cannot marry Koyanim anymore forever and ever, and she cannot eat Truma even if she was born to a Kohen. Say there. Are you happy? Turn on, turn on. Question time. Yeah. Comes the Bryce all of a sudden and asking us, the Bryce is asking a question. Who is her Chalolo? Which woman was called the Chalolo? And the Bryce says, Kol Shinoldim in a Psulim. Any woman born from a disqualified, from a forbidden relationship is called a Chalolo. And that obviously raises a question. End of Bryce. Raises a question. My Psulim, what kind of Psulim are you talking about? Any Psul? Any soil who married any forbidden woman, the girl is halolo, can't marry a kohen. If you mean to say any woman is possible to the man, any any prohibited relationship, that's not true. Look, I'll prove you wrong. Here's another girl to the list. Yeah, you tell me what happened. I want to ask you a question. What happens if a man and a woman Khalila got divorced? And then she remarried, Baruch Hashem, and with the second guy, happily ever after. Ever after means what? After half a year, she got divorced from the second husband, and she remembers the first one. Oh, now that I've been to the second guy, I know with you, it was paradise. As <laughs> Albert as Albert said, everything is relative, right? But she wants to go back to the first husband. No, so let her go back to the first husband. No, what do you say? Can she marry the... No? True. Before she turn, before she passed and there's a very good reason for that we'll say later, and later we'll get to Dashkofa if we have time, a person who returns his Grusha, meaning a person remarried by the way, to remarry a Grusha before she got remarried is a mitzvah that's confusing once she remarried the other guy and then she wants to go back to the first guy she cannot, I personally know such a case a woman is divorced twice, she wanted to go back to the first one and she couldn't halachically, till today she is divorced twice, the kids are, so these things happen so now, what about this Mach So the Psulaloi, well, as we said, she's disqualified for marrying him, her first husband. Let's say they did. Upa, they did remarry. It's It's not a chorus. It's She's not allowed to remarry. Lo Yuchal is not allowed to remarry her. And they did. Or maybe they just had some nice time together. <clears throat> but Lamai said they have children. Actually, it does make a difference whichever way. Now she has the children. Her children are kosher. The children are not mamzerim. It's chai velavim, right? The children are kosher. And believe it or not, also, if she has a girl, the girl is kosher lekiuna. That girl, the daughter born from Ms. Mrs. Second Marriage and Mr. First Marriage, a girl of them is kosher lekiuna. How do you know? It says in the Torah, to Eivahi. By the way, the Torah calls it abomination. Wow. It's almost as bad as the parade. Yeah. So Ava, it's an abomination to do that, to remarry a woman after that. However, to Ava, he, she's to Ava. He to Ava, the end banana to Avim. The children are kosher. They're not mamzer, not halalim. They're good. So you see, you're wrong. Boop, I just proved you wrong. You can't tell me any result of any possible relationship is automatic, automatically halala that can't marry a coin. Many cases, <laughs> the girl is any mamzeres. The real bad relations, right? Like Kores, any else, she can marry anybody, right? And when you have such a case, which is a lighter Easter, she can marry a coin. So, what are you talking about? That's what the Bryce meant. Ah, uh, nah, we feel at home. What's a Chalolo? Any result of a disqualified marriage in the Kehuna department. We all know that. She was born to a coin and X Y Z coin, Gusha coin, Chalolo coin. This God Almana. She married from the wrong kind of coin, wrong kind of woman. Their daughter is a Chalolo, as we know from the chart from everywhere. Frank the Gemara, are you being exclusive here? No, the in lo no the loy. Are you saying Ezoi Chalolo? You're coming with a whole new dramatic statement. What's a Chalolo? The one born from such marriage. And if she wasn't born from such marriage, but she herself. Is a culprit. Is she okay? All these women, right? All these women who cannot marry a Kohen, they were not born from forbidden relationship. They're born to big tzaddikim. At some point in life, she did the wrong choice, the Grusha, and she married a Kohen. And as we said a million times today, a Grusha who marries a Kohen, she is now Chololo, and she can, that's it. She can't marry a Kohen anymore. Yeah. That's what the Brisa means. 
Which one is the Chalala, which is called the mentioned Chalala? So we're going to see what that means. Shaloha Yeloshasa Kosha Klal. Oh, which Chalala is Chalala that never had any good moment in her life? <laughs> never had a kosher moment. In other words, she was born straight into Chalalus. Oh, in other words, as Rashi is going to, I'm going to explain it soon, yeah? But the kids are saying something very, very simple. We basically now said in the Brysa, who is a Chalolo? Which woman can be? Pretty question. What kind of woman is born from the second she emerges into the world in uh, Shari Tzedek? Right there and then she's already a Chalolo. Who is that? Daughter of Mr. Cohen and Mrs. Some kind of problem. Zoyna Chalolo, Grusha Vukulei. My muzkeres, what did you mean mentioned one? What do you mean by that exactly? Easy. Which one is the chalolo that is mentioned in the Torah? That is mentioned in the Torah of And Chachomim don't have to give us any interpretation. What's muzkeres? Muzkeres means mentioned. Mentioned where? In Leviticus, mentioned in Vayikra, in Parashas Emo, which ones are the ones that are mentioned, and we don't need any kind of explanation with the in Psula Kehuna, a woman, a girl born from Psula Kehuna, the only one mentioned Mefurash in the Torah uh, is who? The one who is a girl. Lo, why? Where does it say? Lo yachel zar oy be'amov. When the Torah talks about a Koyen and a Grusha, from God and Alamona, which halal is mentioned? The girl. The girl is mechuleles. The woman herself, how do we know? From a kalvachoymer. Remember? From a kalvachoymer. We said, if the kids who are beautiful, innocent children are possible, Portugal and the naughty girl is possible. If you don't like that, then chazara. If you don't like that, we have another remez, lo yachel zaroi. Don't desecrate. Don't desecrate your children, but they're desecrated to begin with. Even the one who was kosher and you desecrated her and she herself, Desecrate means she was good and she deteriorated. She disqualified herself. That girl is the one who married the Koyan. She is the Chalolo. But the ones who are mefush in the Torah are the children of the Koyan and the Chalolo. Koyan and the Koyan. Tono. Good? Yeah? Tono Abonon. If we have time, we may talk about Ashkofa. Tono Abonon. Oh, interesting, Bryce. And now, now we're going to talk about how many times does the Koyan... Before we continue... A coin and a grusha, they got married, mazal lotov, mazal ra. And a coin married a grusha, what do you do to them? You give them cakes and biscuits and whiskey to the wedding? What do you do? How do you react? What? Lashes, you lash them, right? Yeah, you lash them. Not you, not you. Not you. Don't do that yourself. Don't be a canoe. We are suggesting to bring the wine to the wedding. No wine. Uh, wine, bring the nausea. If another of there. No. So now, yeah, the kids are... Ah, you give them one before you lash them, actually. The kids are, if they don't separate, if they continue living together, Basin takes them, Basin forces them to get divorced, and they have to get lashes. That's said they've been warned. Maybe the con didn't know. Oh, getting benefit of the doubt. Maybe the con didn't know. Could be. He was born in the community. Really, there's no idea. Cohen can't marry Grusha. And the rabbi, very nice rabbi, married them off. But let's say he, he was warned. If a Koyan, both he and she were warned, they had to get Malchus, right? Yeah, if you get married, Basin will give you Malchus. And they said, we love each other, we don't care. Then what? Excuse my face. Yeah, then what? We, If we find out it's true, v'chule, v'chule, with all the procedure of Basin, you lash them. The question is, how many times? Every time they have relations? Well, what's the story? Yeah, let's see. Tono Abonon. Almana, 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 enochai velo achas. Interesting statement. <laughs> Almon, Almon, Almon. Soon you're going to see what that means. Let's say Koyen has had relations with Almona times three, and it being ambiguous on purpose, because it's going to be a journey to discover what does it mean, Almona times three. Does she weigh 300 kilos? We'll see. So you only get slashes once. Grusha, 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 and Chai Veloachas. And by the way, Ellen, again, Almona is only for Koen Godel. We know that. And a Grusha for any Koyen, Grusha times three, whatever that means. He's only have one set of Malchus. Okay, soon we'll see what that means. Almono, the Grusha, the Chololo, Zoino. Let's say the guy married a woman with a very, very, very rich history. Listen to this. Once upon a time, there was a girl. She got married and she, Miskena, the husband died. 
Then she married another guy and she divorced him. And after she was widowed and divorced, she found a nice guy. She always married the wrong kind of people. Who did she marry? Mr. Cohn, Mr. Kaplan. So now what is she? Once she marries, she's Almona Grusha, then she became a Halolo because she married the Cohen. And then once she divorced him, now she gave up and she had some nice time, you know, <laughs> this year so much. Now she's a Zoyna. She went to the pub and had she found a nice guy. You know, happens to be a black uh, rapper singer. I don't know what the kids are. Yeah. And then what? So now she has a very, very rich history. This girl, she's been through a lot. She's writing a novel now about her life. <laughs> now a coin wants to marry her. Then she married a coin, another one. Yeah, she has four different Averas. Get that? He's marrying one girl with four different Isurim, right? She has four different labels of Isu on her. She's both Almona and Gusha and Halol and Zoya, no, but they still love each other. Wow. So now the Koyan wants to marry a girl that has four different, basically, bad labels on her. So now, is he going to get four sets of lashes or one? Oh, interesting. We're entering big questions here of Isu Halol Isu. Now we're just reading the words. Listen to this. Unbelievable. In other words, if really, ah, by the way, the Kohen Godel, that's what this problem of Almono, he's a Kohen Godel. After four traumas happened to her, now she's going for the gold for Kohen <laughs> So now the Kohen Godel basically is having relations with a girl that has four different Isurim on him. So now it says something very interesting. Bizman Shem Keseder, if the Isurim came upon her in that order, Dafka, then he's Chayv and each and every one separately. You know, I'm not saying why exactly. I'm just telling, giving you a hint. In the Torah, that's the order that's mentioned. In the Torah, when you read Vayikroch of Aleph Yudalid, Almana Grusha Chalol Zonis Elo Oh, now, then, because her history, her chronology, Happened with the same set, the same order of the set of Isurim of the Torah, then he's high four sets of lashes. How much is four times 39? I don't know, it's a lot. Yeah, Masha'in can. I can't. What? 150. Psh, what a genius. Zinta, however, Zinta, when he's Chalelo, when he's Gasha, when he's Amila, she did it the wrong way around. Zinta, first she had a nice time in high school with a goy. Then what? Nishalelo, then she married the coin. She's not allowed to marry coin, she's a doino. And she married the coin. That's already bad. That made her halala. Then what happened? Venis Gasho. Of course, it got divorced. Then what? She married another guy. Venis Salmela. She's an almono. It's the same story, but the other way around. Wow. After having the four labels, she married the coin Godel. I'm not saying why now. If it happened the wrong way around from the Torah, then he's only Chayv one. That will be discussed tomorrow, Metzusha. Now we're going to Upa. Okay, let's quickly give me give me one more minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Omar Mal. No, no, no. Stay tuned, but give me a minute and then we'll stay tuned. Omar Mal. Now let's try and analyze what this Almona times three is only Chayv one. Almona, 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 and Chayv Allah Achas. Hi, Almona, Echidami. Tell me what's the story. What is this Almona times three? Ilema, Shabo, Al. If you want to tell me these are three separate Almonas, Shabal, Almona, Sruven, Bal, Almona, Shimon, Bal, Almona, Slavi. Maybe he married three Almonas. And relations with Almon of Ruven, that's one woman. Almon of Shimon, another woman. Almon of Levi, another woman. Am I in Chayv Elachas? Why is in Chayv only one? <laughs> Getting away with murder? First of all, it's three different people, yeah? And three different names. It's Ruven, Shimon, Levi, and it's also three different Almonas. Choices points out that the Gemara is not Meduyuk. Even if both, <laughs> uh, even if uh, uh, both all three Almonas would be basically of one person would be the same. Yeah, the, all, all three women married the guy together. It could be, yeah. All three women married him simultaneously. That's before Cherem the Rabbeinu Gershom. And he died on his scan. So many women, he died already. Yeah, Al three almonos of one person. Of course, the coin, God who marries them, has to, it's three different people. Ella, da 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 da. Oh. Cliffhanger. What is the almono times three business? That is going to be the mystery till tomorrow. Atzlocho, bracha, tomorrow's Monday. I'm afraid there's no shir on Tuesday. Uh, do you want shir on Tuesday? Yes or no? Vote Tuesday of Yom Tov. Yes, no, shir. What are you asking? What do you say? You okay with the shir? Who's voting pro shir and who's against shir? And, and pro shir on Tuesday. Tuesday is the Arab Yom Tov. Yes or no? Yes, you want? Maybe. Yeah.
you 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 want share? It will be a Tuesday. Otherwise, I can't make the show without a fee. Thank you to everyone in Torrent anytime YouTube. Thank you for watching us and stay with us and with the triplet Almano. See what's her fate. At Slocha Uvrocha. May we see the base of the soon.